next weekend is one of our local steam rallies, uh, Chester Lee Street Steam Rally. It's on on the Saturday and Sunday. If you're local, it's well worth going. There's a lot of stuff there. I'll be there. I'll have probably one or two of my steam engines there. Unfortunately, Richard won't be there with the DG8 Central Steam Wagon. Um, he sadly has had to sell it. But I'll be there helping out probably the Stafford lads with their two Senate LS4s. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that give us something to do just to keep us occupied. Like I say, if you go there, call in, say hello, really, I'll do a bite, and there's always a cup of coffee. The intentions are to do enough work on this engine to make it run and then strip it and rebuild it completely. I'm going to take this lagging off, this brass banding off and the lagging off just because the bolts that hold the cylinder head on and the bolts that hold the valve chest core on are missing and I'm sure they're just sliding from the back. There's no threads in them. I've got a really good fitting screw have a bit here. I don't want to damage any of these screws at all. Because that there's none of them damaged now and I want to try and keep it that way. There's a few missing. I'm sure I'll be able to get some or make something to, to match up. Looks like it's been lying down on it. A piece of wood or something and that's what's stuck in that in that slot there yeah it's bits of wood That's actually, that's actually tin plate and the brass surround's been soldered on. A little, you see a little copper of it through there. I would imagine that would be original. As I thought, there the bolts that hold the cylinder cover on and the valve chest cover. That's one of the valve chest cover bolts and it's been machined away so it goes in to plenty of clearance. That one there's a stud that's screwed straight in. There's little brass inserts in here that the cylinder retaining screws go on to. That appears to be pinned on as well. This is real quality stuff this. So that's going under the standard. So I need to make some joints for there, some new studs and some new nuts for here. There's two types of nut. Uh, that's three it's a bit worth. That's the old pre-war type. It should be on there. And that's the more modern nut. It's the same size thread, same everything else, just it's a smaller nut. They made the nut smaller during the war. To save on material. They're still available, I'll either buy some or I'll make them, but they certainly look better than the uh, modern replacements, I think, anyway. So I'm going to leave these studs well alone, clean the faces up, need to make two joints for it. Uh, some work we've done on here, this crosshead gauge loose. I'm going to take it off this horrible base that's destined for the wood burner basically. Uh, it'll be a lot more manoeuvrable to, to work on. And the crank will still turn over with it just resting on that base there.
I'm tempted to pull a bearing off and have a look inside. It's uh, very tempted. Yeah, more than that's eight mil. Hideous. This is heavy. Uh, not stupid heavy, but it's heavy enough uh, where you can hurt yourself trying to lift it. I'll need a lift to get this off, I'll have to get me son to come and give us a hand. I'm going to have a little sneaky look under this and just see what sort of state the crankshaft's in. Just going to lift that main bearing journal off. I'll feed pipe off first. I think these old feeders could have been put on as an extra. I don't think they're original, but I don't know. I haven't seen in that photograph of this. This engine anyway. Well, but our spanners have come in very handy. I keep buying them at the car boot sales. These are the small type nuts, these are the original nuts. Got a mark on the front, got an E on the front. Yeah, the split bearing brasses. Yeah, they're really good. Crank's excellent. Nothing much to worry about there. That's strange how those holes have been slotted. That's They've had inserts put in there. So whether something's happened to the original one or what I don't know. Um, it certainly fits, certainly does the job. But it's interesting to see what's happened there. These will go back together with double nuts on because there's a clearance on that bearing there. It's a lift on the crank there, and that's taken up by double nuts. That's interesting the way that's been not bastardised but been sort of repaired somehow. So they're adjusted up to take the play off and then check nuts put on there. This is the valve chest off the engine. All these parts will be going to get sandblasted and painted. But what I'm going to do is make sure that's sort of clean so I can make a joint for there. Bolt it on the engine, make a joint for the sunlock cover just to get it running. As it looks like BSP 
quarter BSP in there. That probably been a drain hole to drain any water from the uh, side valve chamber. Yeah, these castings are sort of yeah, exactly what they are. That rough sand castings would have been a decent joint material. And I'm sure it'll be perfectly all right. I could mill that flat, but honestly, you do it need to. I'm not going to go to those sort of lengths. It's reasonably flat, it's certainly flat enough. I want to put the drill when you joint making to fit on there. I'm going to pick the holes out first. And then trim the rest to size. First, I had a ball bearing on a stick, it was ideal for doing these, and I can't find the bastard. It's annoying. Very annoying. Made a, made a little tool around the end on that should do the job quite nicely. Just to cut these bolt holes. And I'm sure you get the idea, so we'll go all the way around, get all the bolt holes in and then cut the centre out. Once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. As Emmy says, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Anyway, thanks for watching.